I'm Meredith Monk. I'm a composer and singer and director. And this is my house. <laughs> I write music for the voice as an instrument with no text. I had a kind of revelation in the mid-60s that the voice could be like the body, that it could be, that the voice could jump and turn and spiral and so that it was a kinetic instrument and also it could have male and female within it. It could have different ages, different characters, different ways of producing sound. So that was the big revelation. You know, I love old photographs. So in the bathroom, my little art gallery, this was my grandfather, Joseph Zelman, who was a singer in Russia, bass baritone. This was my grandmother, Rose Korniker, who was uh, a concert pianist and accompanied him, and that's how they met each other when he came to America. Coming from a, a family of singers, sometimes it's kind of hard to find where your spot is in, in that atmosphere, and I felt that I was really making my own way of working with the voice. I played Jews harp since about the late 90s. So here I have a whole Jews harp collection. Many, many, many of them. I had done a lot of folk music before I started working on my own music and I had also uh, done leader singing and, and Sarah Lawrence, I was in the opera workshop and you know studying leader and so I think I always did feel feel that it was a kind of folk music from another planet or something like that. <laughs> Not really folk music, but the, but the, uh, what would I say, the plaintive and honest quality of folk music I wanted to have in, in my music. A lot of work has been done on this wonderful piano that I love. Um, I've named it Rose. It's a Steinway A, and it just has a very mellow, it's a real singer's piano. So I, I love this piano very, very much. So a lot of work has happened on this piano. Come on, Nudie. Come on, little pumpkin. I can't have a dog and cat um, because I'm allergic, and so my ex-husband gave me a turtle. So then I just really started loving having a turtle. And then we were always talking about how funny it would be to have a turtle called Neutron. You know, people just give me these turtles, turtles, turtles. So this is just a little bit of the collection. I love the time sense of a turtle. You know, I think that that's what I really appreciate. It's a different time duration than we think. So I, I like being around a different, you know, it would be like living next to a glacier or something. <laughs> so. I like that juxtaposition in New York. It's very important for mental health. This is actually like taking the material and, and storyboarding it. I really like putting it out. You know, I'll have it in a notebook, but I really like having it out there so I can actually really look at it. Each of these do represent a passage or, or movement. I like to be able to rearrange the material and see whether it's structurally sound or not. You know, it's just a way that I can keep on playing with it and keep it fluid as long as I can. This is me and John Cage. I would say two months before he died. We were in a festival together in, um, in the Alps. This is His Holiness. I've been a Buddhist for many years. I started practicing formally in 1985. A shrine is very inspiring. It's just a way of being more conscious, and it's also just a reminder to wake up, <laughs> which I need a lot. So that's why I have shrines all over my whole house. Mostly we're walking around half asleep, you know, thinking that time is going to last forever and not really being present. You know, it's just this thing like, wake up, you know, be here, you know, as much as possible at, at every moment, really be here, and don't waste your life. <laughs> 